Today on Big Lou Barbecue, I got a number 10 skillet. Oh yeah, that means 12 inches. We'll talk about that in a minute. From Field Company, yeah. They sent this to me and I'm gonna give it an honest review. If you're interested in uh, what the Field Company skillet can do, stay tuned to Big Lou Barbecue. Ham steak, French bread toast, home fries, eggs. Hey, I'm 50 years old and I've been cooking in cast iron since I began my adult life after getting out of college when I was about 24, 25. So over 25 years, I've been using cast iron my, almost my entire adult life. I've developed quite a collection of cast iron skillets, uh, cast iron cookware, and uh, I've got my own opinions about how to use it, how to clean it, how to season it. I haven't put a lot of that out on YouTube because everybody's got their own opinions and you know what they say about opinions, right? Um, I may do a video on what I use to season my cast iron and stuff. Uh, Field Company it started out a few years ago trying to make skillets the old fashioned way, all right? No, not the real old-fashioned way, like this number eight skillet with a gate mark, all right, that dates to the 19th century. By the way, this skillet here has been on my channel before. It's my primary cornbread skillet, and I'll use it on the grill. It's got a gate mark on the bottom. This belonged to my great, great grandmother. Yeah, it belonged to my grandmother's grandmother. Mm -hmm. Not my grandmother's mother, my grandmother's grandmother. Yeah, uh-huh, so... I still use this for cornbread, but it might get hung on the wall and retired after 200 years of service. I might start using this field as my primary cornbread skillet, except that the field's a number 10. This is a number eight. We're gonna talk about what that means here in a minute. All right, I got this is a skillet I like to use. It does have a slight warp in it, but it still works on my glass top stove. Just gonna keep it from spinning. Uh, it doesn't, it's not a bad warp, but that's the brand of it, Griswold. Can you see that? Griswold, all right. Uh, love the skillet, got a wooden handle. Because it's got a wooden handle, I can't go into the oven with it. But uh, it makes it nice for a gripping. Anyway, it's got thinner walls than cast iron has today. And a smooth bottom, you know? Most cast iron you buy today from uh, Asia or from America by the leading brand is not smooth when you get it. Now, this is a standard number 10 skillet from the leading brand, okay? And this is my workhorse. I've had this well over a decade. Uh, it's got a smooth surface, a smooth surface. It didn't when I got it. I had a breaking in period, a breaking in period. Uh, about three years after having it, I said, you know, that surface is getting pretty smooth. 10 or 12 years after having it, Surface is just about as smooth as anything you ever want, but I didn't sand it or anything. I used it. I used it, but it took a break it in period. Egg stuck at first, all right? I love the skillet. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but I am going to make a comparison. Now, so Field Company sent me this one. Even in the box, it's lighter than that one. Even in the box, all right? They're not paying me to do this review. They contacted me. I didn't contact them. I didn't go into YouTube to be an influencer. I went into YouTube just to have fun and teach people some recipes and stuff. But the company contacted me and darn right, I said, yeah, I would be glad to review your skillet. So they sent me a number 10 skillet, all right? Um, before I open it, let's talk about what number 10 means. Traditionally, cast iron was, had numbers on it that was based on the old wood stoves from the 19th century or even earlier than that when they would have the open burners. The burners would be in uh, American or English customary units, inches, not millimeters, you know. Um, and if it was a num eight inch burner, you had a number eight skillet, but it would be a little bit bigger than what a number eight would be or a number 10 inch burner would have a number 10 inch skillet, which corresponds to roughly what's called a 12 inch skillet, which is from top diameter, going to showing you this one again, top to top, all right? 
is a little less than 12 inches because you know they probably measure everything with metric when they manufacture stuff. All right, but this one only weighs six pounds. Let's open it up, guys. Y'all, you they open it up for you. Look at that. Comes in this nice box. See that right there? That holds it. Holds it in place. Doesn't ship out the way. All right. And that is just a joy to hold. Comes with a little card. Okay. Care and use instructions and a personal thank you from Field Company. Now, Field Company's made in America. Yeah. Up in, my, all their foundries are up in the Northeast, in the New England places. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, I, I hear they cook for good food up there. I do, I hear they cook good food, and they got foundries. I had to set that to the side over there, stepped out of the camera for a minute. Guys, that's the bottom of it. Number 10 means it's a 12-inch skillet thereabouts. Does have a little uh, ring here on it. Made in the USA, Field Company. Got their little crest. The handle has this little uh, shield thing, which is their shape in it, all right? But you see that little indention right there? A lot of the YouTube channels I've seen didn't show that. They only showed this top. And I said, well, the handle kind of looks goofy. The handle doesn't really look attractive to me when I saw some videos on YouTube with it. But boy, I take this out and I hold it. That little groove right there, it fits that this part of your hand where your fingers go and I got big hands but man this is this is good heavy enough to whop somebody if you had to but light enough that you could swing it to whop them my wife's passed away so I ain't gonna get whopped all right anyway <sighs> get the bottom got my finger marks on it but it is smooth as a baby baby's bottom. I'm telling you what. They've smoothed it out. They've got it seasoned three times with grape seed oil. And, you know, it's nice. So, it's a number 10 skillet, which basically means 12 inches. All right, let's go over some dimensions for this. This is coming from the uh, Field Company website. I'll leave a link down below in the description box to it. By the way, Field, once again, is not paying me for this review. They just sent me the skillet. And um, I decided, you know, let's do a review. And, uh, you know, making comparisons to the other skillets, because it's not a paid advertisement, I can do that, all right? According to the website, I didn't measure it, I didn't put it on the scale, but I can tell you, this field skillet in my left hand is way lighter than this one, all right? In my right hand, all right? I can tell you by feeling it, but according to the websites, Six pounds, six pounds. The other one, 7.89 pounds. That's according to each manufacturer's website. All right, top diameter on this one is 11 and 5 eighths. All right, top diameter on the other one is 11 and three quarters. So one eighth of a, of a um, inch difference in the top diameter, all right? And I lost my little page here, just a second. Come back up now to me. Come back to me. There we go. We're back. The cooking service, though, is nine and, what does that say? Yeah, nine and three quarters. Nine and three quarters on the cooking service. It's nine and a quarter on the other one. The walls are a little taller on the other one, slightly taller on the other one. Not much, but slightly, okay? The wall height on this one is a two and one eighth, all right? And um, it doesn't, they're kind of straight. They're kind of straight. They don't flare out a lot. But then when you get right here, there's a little lip on it that rolls. There's no pour spout. I asked why. I talked to the fellas at uh, Cody up there at Field Skillet. Talked to them on the phone, not just with email, like personally on the phone. And he says there's no pour spout because the way this flares out right there, it like comes up. It's scientifically designed that when you pour liquid out of it, all right, bingo, bango. It, does, it breaks the surface tension and it doesn't drip down the skillet. So you don't need a pour spout, all right? Um, guys, 
let's put this to the test. I'm gonna wash it out with soap and water. I'm gonna cook an egg in it, and then I'm gonna cook a complete breakfast in it, all right? And um, you're gonna see this skillet on uh, Big Lou Barbecue quite a bit. It's about to become my main kitchen skillet. One, because it's two pounds lighter. Two, because it just feels nice. This handle is awesome, absolutely awesome. I am gonna put some uh, oil down, and the card recommends using using oil as well, all right? So I'm gonna smear that around a little bit and uh, we're gonna cook us up an egg to see how it goes. I've got this heating up slowly on medium heat. I'm gonna kick it up to about six, five here before I cook that egg. While you were off camera, I picked a paper towel up and I wiped the sides down here and the helper handle and a little bit here on this part of the handle and um, got it all around the edges and stuff. Of course, I didn't do the bottom because the bottom's on the stove right now, but um, did wipe some oil around it, maybe help put another coat of seasoning. All right, this is the first cook, egg test, all right? That's uh, fry some eggs sunny up. And dead nabbit, I got a shell in there. Woo, got that out. All right, this sunny up egg is in the same position you saw it a few minutes ago. And uh, it was, you know, I lifted it, but look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that. That comes up. That is the very first cook in this skillet. Fried egg. Look. Look. Guys, it took me years, years to break in that other skillet. All right? And I've had it for 10 or 12 years. Of course, it's been broken in for quite some time. But I'm talking about to where I can cook an egg like that. Wow. Wow. Look. Come on out of here. You're done. My beautiful sunny up egg. All right, let's get us some breakfast. We're gonna start with home fries. I've got some bacon grease here uh, from some bacon that I've cooked up before. I'm not gonna be cooking bacon in this today. We're gonna get that bacon grease going and uh, we're gonna make some home fries in this first and then uh, we'll cook up a ham steak and we'll do some scrambled eggs. All right, that skillet has gotten hot. Just cooking that one egg. We've got that bacon grease. Got some red potato home fries we're gonna make. Let's get these cooking. Who doesn't love home fries? I like them for dinner too with pork chops and stuff. You know, but they're delicious at breakfast. Kind of like a southern style hash brown, all right? While these home fries cook, let's talk about the benefits of cooking with a cast iron or a carbon steel skillet. It's because you apply oil and it polymerizes and you reapply the seasoning. If you buy a nonstick pan, Teflon, or something with some fancy green or copper surface on it or something, it will wear. The surface will wear. And you can't reapply the nonstick surface. But if you use a cast iron, you can reply the seasoning, reapply the nonstick surface, do that at home. You don't have to chunk the thing in a landfill. It's a lot more environmentally friendly and a piece of iron like this field skillet will last for generations. You saw, I've got my great, great grandmother's iron from the 19th century, all right? Lasts forever. I still make cornbread in that thing, all right? So cast iron is beautiful. Give this as a wedding gift if you know a couple that's getting married soon, June's coming up. This is a skillet that will add a piece of kitchenware that will last the entire time they raise their family and then be passed on to the next generation. I'm telling you, this is nice. And you don't have to waste time breaking it in like some of those newer irons, all right? I mean, it took years. That egg, first cook, egg slid around. Got these home fries, they're getting just about done. Okay, on this initial cook breakfast, these home fries are starting to get soft and starting to um, get, you know, seared up. Now, I will say that it would have been a little easier if I had a lid for this. Uh, my research at this time in spring of 2021 on uh, the Field Company website, they have lids for their number eight skillet, but not for their other size skillets, including this number 10. Maybe eventually they'll have a lid, but you can cook home fries without a lid as well, you know? So anyway, these are getting, you can see the uh, potatoes are starting to get soft. So it's time to season them and get some butter in them. All right, so dump in maybe a tablespoon or two of butter and hit them with some Cajun Creole seasoning. Get that butter melted and these home fries 
are ready. I get those on the plate. Look at that though. There's no sticking. There is no. See, they're searing up. And then this pan is broken in right from the start. Right from the start, this pan is broken in. That that you, you think, oh well, that's an expensive pan compared to the other cast iron. And it is, and that's what I thought. But man, it's it's ready to go. It is ready to go right. I mean, look, you got good searing on the uh, home fries right there. And there's nothing stuck on the bottom of this pan. Nothing. I mean, it's amazing. And it's brand new. Brand new. The only thing I've cooked in it before these home fries was that fried egg. I coat it in the butter. These home fries are ready. Get them on the plate. We're going to cook a ham steak. All right, that was off camera, but I, th I know the surface is designed for pouring liquids, but the potatoes just poured out of there. You can see what's left on the bottom of it. Uh, I'm gonna take this paper towel real quick and uh, just kind of wipe it out. Look at that, look at that, ow, it's hot, so be careful. Don't try this at home. I'm an untrained amateur, all right? Uh, there we go. Look, guys, it's, that's something right there. Gone. That's just, light from the camera right there that you see. I mean, this thing, wow. Brand new and already broken in. All right. The ham's got enough surface oil on it, I figure. Let's cook that ham steak right like that. Let's uh, flip this ham steak over just with the picture. Look at that. Yeah, there's stuff in the bottom, but that's gonna come off of there. Man. Brand new and already broken in. All right, this ham steak's ready. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that come off of there. Look at that. All right. Hot coffee. Little red eye gravy going. And it pulls that off of there real, real easy. Deglazes all that ham stuff. I know that's not country ham, but make the radar gravy with this anyway. All right. Get some sugar going in there. Look at that. You can see it coming off the bottom. Easy, easily deglazed ham. All right. I've added a little brown sugar, a little pepper, a little salt. Turn the fire down a little bit. Country ham makes better red eye gravy, but we got some red eye gravy going. Now, not a lot, but a little. Now, let's see how it pours, all right? Why did I make the red eye gravy? One, to deglaze that pan, and two, to see how it pours without having a pour spout, all right? Put that coffee cup right there like that. Remember, this is an induction stove. Look at that, look at that. Poured just fine. Hardly any drip down the side and it dripped into the cup. I'm telling you what, that did a good job. All right, got it wiped out with a paper towel. Guys, I'm, and I expected to like the skillet. I did not, because I like all cast iron, all right? I expected to like the skillet. I did not expect to be this impressed with the skillet. I really am impressed. All right, before we do the uh, eggs, let's do some uh, French bread toast. Not French toast, French bread toast. The butter's melted. Let's get the French bread toast slices in there. We'll cook those scrambled eggs last. All right, the toast is cooking. Guess I could let it brown a little bit more, but we're hungry. All right. Gonna be good dipping it in that red eye gravy. Maybe you'd make a ham sandwich with it with that ham. All right. Toast is done on this side. Time to get it out of here. Make some eggs. Gonna be good French bread toast. Dipping that red eye gravy that we pour over that ham. All right. Let's get some, uh, gonna use some pecan oil to cook these eggs. Southern pecan oil, all right? Here we go. 
straight scrambled eggs. Get them all out that bowl. Now, still a brand new skillet, but I have cooked the home fries, the ham, and the toast in it. And uh, now, and that one fried egg. Look at that, look at that. Even off the sides, brand new skillet. I'm talking no break-in whatsoever. I can't thank the folks at Field enough for sending me this skillet. It's gonna be my new everyday workhorse skillet. Gonna replace the other one as the everyday workhorse skillet. It's gonna replace my uh, Griswold, which is gonna go on the wall because it's got a slight warp in it. And um, I tell you what, look at that, look at that, look at that. These scrambled eggs are just, there's nothing, nothing. Mm. I got the fire too hot for the scrambled eggs, so I had it still up for the toast. I gotta turn that down. I know better than that. All right, so turn the, um, turn the stove down. I know it's not fire, it's an induction stove, but you know what I mean. And these eggs are done. Turn the stove off. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. How easy do you think that skillet's gonna be easy to clean? How easy do you think that's gonna be easy to clean? Nothing. That was real time. I didn't edit the eggs. Breakfast time, a little hot sauce on the eggs. A little hot sauce on the eggs. A little red eye gravy on the ham. Maybe a little on the potatoes. Yep. All in that one field skin. All right, I'm 50 years old. Been around cast iron since I was about 25. Half my life I've been using cast iron. I have never, ever had a skillet that cooked like that without a lengthy break it in process. Yeah, that other brand of skillet, it's rough and uh, it'll cook, but it takes, um, takes years, years to get it smooth where I can cook a complete breakfast in it, all right, and just wipe it out between the potatoes and the ham and the toast and then the eggs, all right? Never had one, I've never had one that um, the fried egg slid around like that. It does it in that other one, it sure does but it took years. I've had it for a dozen years or more, all right? This thing, just wiped it out, all right? And it's clean. I am gonna to touch the season up with some Buzzy Wax, um, cause I got some, all right? But then I'm probably just gonna use, you know, standard uh, cooking olive oil on it or uh, whatever. Um, but I'll tell you what, they, they did a great job. Broken in, brand new skillet, fried egg test, slid. <laughs> Never had that done before on any piece of iron I've ever had that was brand new. Mm -hmm. All right, so you say, well, it's got a premium price on that premium cast iron skillet. Yeah, it does. And I'm a school teacher in uh, Louisiana and uh, Louisiana is notorious for paying school teachers uh, penances, but I enjoy what I do and I accept the fact that, you know, I'm not a wealthy man. And uh, the price of this skillet would scare somebody like me off because I don't have a big budget. I don't. Um, but I can see where it's valuable. I can see where it's worth it. Uh, I would spend this money on giving it to a wedding gift to somebody. Um, I'll tell you what, it's, this is a, it's well worth it. I don't have to spend years breaking it in. It's lighter, all right? It's lighter than the other one. And it uh, doesn't weight down my drawer that I keep it in, you know, uh, messing the hinges up and stuff quite as much. Yeah, is it still heavy? Yeah, well, it's iron but it's, you know, nearly two pounds lighter than the other one. Nearly two pounds lighter, all right? Um, so, well, there's a lot of premium cast iron brands out there right now. And even the brand that's been around for a long time, it has a premium line. Yeah, there's a lot of premium cast iron out there. There sure is. And Field's one of them, all right? I think Field, I'm impressed with this one. I say, well, what if I buy it and the company goes out of business? Well you still got a fantastic piece of iron, don't you? I mean, Griswold's out of business, Wagner's out of business, Birmingham Stove and Range is out of business, and families still fight over their items at funerals. Yeah, families still fight at funerals for that, and I got another F word for you. Phil! Thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue.